All right. So back to back Facebook lives here. Had one yesterday with Brenna uh, as we were reviewing the stats for our real estate market. Now uh, here live today with Mitch Friedman and Mitch, regular guest. We've now committed we're going to be doing this monthly. That's correct. And and we're picking topics based on conversations that you and I are having or hearing questions that we're answering on a regular basis, right? Because <laughs> the, the questions come up frequently. So we want to address those as, as they're coming up, right? We're getting a lot of questions on ABC. Great. Well, let's, you know, have a, have a conversation, a, a live video about what, what's going on. So today we wanted to go over down payment assistance. Um, you know, before we do that, we're gonna we're gonna have a little fun. I'm gonna repeat a question from yesterday because I'm I'm sure that Mitch didn't watch the video uh, yesterday. But uh, celebrity doppelgangers, Mitch, if who do you get told, or who have you been told that you look alike in the celebrity world? Yeah, it's a little embarrassing. Uh, Martin <laughs> Short. Martin Short. Oh no. <laughs> I've gotten that a few times. <laughs> uh, and now that I've seen it, Mitch, I'm sorry, I can't unsee it. It's there. I see the Martin Short. So uh, if I if I think of another celebrity, uh, you know, we'll, we'll let you know. We'll jump that one off. So, um, so let's talk about down payment assistance right now. I, I know we've done another down payment assistance video here uh, in the past. But these things are always changing. Things are always moving in the finance world. I mean, you're getting emails and notifications multiple times a day as to changes and different things that are going on. So, right. but one, one complaint or lament or, or whatever you want to call it that I hear from folks all the time is, wow, with the housing prices, the way that they've gone, how is my son, my daughter, my grandkids, how are they ever going to afford to buy a home with the way that prices have gone? Now, a big, barrier for a lot of folks, I think, is is the money up front, right? There's money that it takes for your down payment to end up purchasing a home. So as we talk about down payment assistance programs, Mitch, um, give us a, a brief overview of what that entails for somebody that's looking to purchase a home. Sure. Um, thanks for having me again. It's good to, good to be with you. And I always enjoy talking about all mortgage and real estate things related to help educate the people that either listening and watching now or come back and look at it at a later date because the information really is very prevalent for the most part, all the foundational information. Um, so thanks for inviting me again and entrusting my information. Um, the down payment programs are very, very helpful uh, in many different ways, especially in a market that's a little still kind of crazy where we have a seller's market, but we utilize a down payment assistance program for this circumstance. And then also when we see the market soften a little bit, which you've also seen a little bit of that, um, the uh, the um, offers that are made using down payment assistance loans have been uh, more better received lately than they were in the past. Because if you're competing against a cash offer or any financing, oftentimes that seller's gonna go with the cash offer. And a lot of those have kind of gone, are done. People who had all that money who needed to buy a house and wanted to, there seems to be fewer of those right now. And there is now a greater opportunity to get these types of offers through as far as our clients are concerned. Um, so why a down payment assistance program? What are the benefits? And there's many, many of them. I'll touch on a few and then we'll talk through other reasons to consider them. But mainly what they do is they help a buyer who either doesn't have a lot of money for their own down payment or does have money, but they're gonna to need to use their money for a different opportunity within the same transaction. And so they may need that to cover closing costs, or they may need it to cover what's called an appraisal gap, which I'm sure you'll cover as we talk today. Um, so that what this does is it serves two purposes, one of down payment to help with the required minimum down payment to get a new mortgage. And second, it frees up some of their own money to use towards making their offer a little bit more aggressive or acceptable to a seller when they're, when they're submitting an offer. Um, so that, that's where we're seeing it being used in, in those two capacities most often. And then three, uh, we can get into the mechanics of it. Just, I think it's important for people to understand that there's more than one down payment assistance program. What differentiates the two that are most commonly used and why would someone choose one over the other? 
And that is something I'm, I'm happy to explain in a very short amount of time uh, when we get there to um, support different thoughts around that. Yeah, different, different programs. And they, <clears throat> I think the, the most common thing that I hear, because I think people are aware of down payment assistance programs, or a lot of folks call it a first time homebuyer program. Right. Uh, you do not need to be a first time home buyer. If you've owned a home in the past, or even if you currently own a home, that doesn't automatically disqualify you from being able to, to utilize these programs, right? That's correct. Some, some first time home buyer programs mean you haven't owned a home in the last three years. And that's the qualifier around that. And the other qualifier for just these traditional down payment assistance programs uh, are you either can't own a home at the time of utilizing it, or you can, uh, and they're also uh, pertain to income limitations to be able to qualify for certain programs within the down payment program selection. Yeah. In, in addition, there are some uh, low income specific uh, homes, and, when, and typically, right, if somebody said low income housing, your, your immediate thoughts like, oh my gosh, I don't want to live in that part of town, right? I'm going to get uh, stabbed. I've got to have like specific insurance to protect me from drive-bys or whatever. There's a lot of really nice properties that are specifically designated and built for, you know, folks that just don't earn a whole lot of money in, in this market to, to make sure we have affordability for everybody. So um, in conjunction, I'm assuming that, that some of those down payment assistance programs also allow somebody to purchase one of those. Correct. Yeah, they're called affordable housing programs. Yep. And they offer very specific properties within those programs that are designated to always be and remain an affordable housing property. And typically it's 50 cents on the dollar is kind of the good rule of thumb of what they sell for in the given community. So a $250,000 two bedroom, two bath condo is probably worth $500,000 in a fairly decent, nice area, it's just they fall into a, this category of affordable housing. Uh, they have very strict income limitations and um, qualifying limitations, but uh, when it works, it works really well. Uh, is it that's a different animal and that's the, I'm happy to talk about it, but it, it can be tied in in conjunction with the down payment program for sure. Yeah, right. So <clears throat> not the affordable housing, uh, you know, session, but we could absolutely do another video on, on the affordable housing. So, you know, we take a look at the different programs. Um, so let's talk about kind of the two more popular down payment assistance programs. So uh, let's start with the, the Chaffa. And I think that one was uh, more widely used for a long time. It, it seems to maybe taken a backseat a little bit to, to the other one. Uh, but uh, what would somebody need to qualify in order to, to utilize and take advantage? And then what are the benefits? Sure. Good, good questions all around. So the down payment assistance programs in general, the philosophy is they give people money to use and, and replace the down for the down payment of which they then put a lien or a loan against the house to protect that money that these down payment programs are offering. So a lot of people don't understand that part of it. Um, Chaffa does have one other option. They do offer a grant, which is not a loan against the house. So that's what, what is going to be helpful. If I speak with people who want to utilize these programs, we have to delineate which of the programs makes most sense for their situation. Um, but Chaffa, which is the Colorado Housing and Finance Authority, uh, they offer uh, several programs. There's three that we use most commonly of which they are all loans against the house. Those loans are then used to, to supplement the down payment. And then there's a traditional mortgage placed on the house to cover the remaining cost. So the borrower is basically financing 100%, in some cases, 101% of the value of the property when they buy the home and close on it. Um, with Chaffa, that second mortgage that is sitting on the property is a, a lien on the property. They call them silent seconds. And what that means is there are no mortgage payments being made during the time they have that loan outstanding on the property. Um, so, but that loan does have to be repaid at some point if that buyer either sells their home at a later date or refinances the existing first mortgage. So those must, that second loan must be paid in full. Yeah, so kind of similar, right? <clears throat> you know, back in, in a previous life when I was selling motorcycles, 
and we had an opportunity for somebody to finance a you know motorcycle harley davidson or, or a yamaha or whatever uh with no money out of pocket right no money down they, they were able to get that done this kind of operates the same way now now there's some very uh, distinct differences there between it but um, you know, from a consumer standpoint, right? Uh, I didn't have all the money to put down and now I'm able to get into a home, right? Correct, correct. And, it, and it's a wonderful way to get into a home if you have, if you're short or limited on funds or cash available, but at least you get into the marketplace. And um, as long as the payments are affordable for the, the new home buyer, um, then it's a great option to be able to buy a home when many people think they can't buy a home because they don't have 20% down payment, let alone no down, no money for a down payment. So it's a really, really phenomenal tool to use. Um, and, and comparing Chaffa to, and then we'll, we'll go back to each one, but Chaffa to the Metro Down Payment Assistance Program, they also provide a second mortgage that is placed against the property as a loan. However, after three years of the borrower or buyer living in that home and staying in that home as their primary residence, they will forgive that second loan. It will never have to be paid back at all when the buyer sells that home or refinances that property. So it is one of the programs that we use many times for that, for that feature. Yeah, really, so, really cool, right? To be able to borrow money and then I'm kind of never really paying that back. Right, right. I mean, you can That's borrow. Not a bad to, deal. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great offering. Uh, they charge a little bit higher rate based on how much money you want to use for that second loan to, to use for the down payment. But if you compare the monthly payments, you can never make up the difference of forgiving twenty thousand dollars compared to having to pay it back on a monthly payment. So they they both have their place, and we use them as needed. Um, but it's great to know there's two options. It's always great to have options. And I think that's one of the more important pieces that, that I like as a consumer is to know that I have options. If this doesn't quite fit what I want to do, can I change it and do something slightly different? Right. Um, and as long as I have options, then, then fantastic. I love that option uh, availability. Right. Well, and that's why we get hired as the professional service provider. You provide options of real estate and different types and forms and what works and what doesn't work and how to, how to educate and advise. And then I get hired for the mortgage side because there's a plethora of options as well. Not as many homes, there's more homes to pick from than there are lending programs to pick from. <laughs> but it sure feels like there's many when you have a lot of options to pick from. Yeah. So uh, with the two different down payment programs, down payment assistance programs, um, pretty quickly I'll be able to understand which program is the better fit for the new home buyer and then lay out the differences between why I feel that way. And then as long as we both see eye to eye that that is, that is the better choice, then we go in that direction. Um, and so, but it is nice to have choices because to your point initially, Chaffa kind of was the only thing in town for many, many years. And it was wonderful. It was, it was a great solution, but this Metro Down Payment Assistance Program came along and added just some more features that make it even a more aggressive and a more uh, appropriate program to consider at times. Yeah, and you know, my my team, you know, our mission statement is delivering the dream of home ownership everywhere, right? Now, to deliver the dream of home ownership for everywhere, we have to be able to create solutions and having down payment assistance programs for folks that, that haven't been stashing cash aside right in order to to be able to put the down payment down right now uh growing up my mom was a single mom raising a couple of boys and right being able to set aside money every month um wasn't something that was really easy to do right when you're working two jobs to make ends meet and put two kids through sports and feed them uh being able to set that money down aside to get into home ownership can be a challenge right right for sure that, that's a real challenge so these programs opening up the door for home ownership uh, for folks to be able to get into home ownership, right? And let's take a look at, you know, if I bought last year and we saw 15.7% value increase, wow, what, what just happened there to the value of my home, what I purchased versus if I continued to rent at oftentimes a little bit higher amount, then, you know, I, I didn't see that increase. Right. And for sure. And that just goes back to 
as long as it's affordable to the buyer, it's it's very well, in my opinion, getting in the real estate market is is very important to do as long as it's comfortable and affordable. Uh, yeah. Just for that comment you made, that net worth calculation if somebody bought a four hundred thousand dollar home, that's probably now the low end of your average median price of a property. But let's say four hundred thousand dollars at fifteen percent is sixty thousand dollar appreciation. I didn't make sixty thousand dollars more during the year, but my house did, and I didn't have to go to work. I didn't do anything. I made my mortgage payments. Yeah, and I had to have a roof over my head anyway. So it's a great example of of owning a, a piece of real estate and being at your primary residence is is the wonderful combination given our current climate of appreciation. Yeah, and going back to having options, right? So if my home value went up sixty thousand dollars. And I, I didn't have to come up with cash to, you know, to purchase the home. My home went up $60,000 and I need to move, right? Something happened in my world and I need to relocate. Well, I've got $60,000 equity that I can then take and move and do something with. If, you know, I need funds for, I don't know, kit, my, my son's only two, right? He's not gotten overly expensive yet, but you know, I've got friends that their kids are in competitive dance or competitive hockey, and they're talking about all those, uh, all of those pieces. But imagine kind of what that looks like, um, and being able to potentially tap into some equity, or you know, you get an opportunity to go make an investment, buy into an opportunity that could absolutely be the launching pad that creates the lifestyle that you're looking for. Exactly. Again, as long as you can afford to keep it. Correct. Right. And that's the goal up front is making sure it all makes sense at that time frame. Yeah. Um, and, you know, these programs were de were designed. Um, so these companies are net are um, nonprofit organizations. So one, they're heavily regulated in what they do. Two, they know all the rules and guidelines that the actual mortgage that we make on the property, that larger first mortgage that's being made like an FHA loan or a conventional loan, that's, that makes up the difference between the down payment assistance of 3% or 4% or 5% and the actual purchase price. That's that's the big loan we do. They're, they're very tied into what those guidelines are. They know the regulations, they meet all the, all the legal requirements. And that's crucial to know because we don't wanna get involved. There have been in the past where some Got got involved and come to find out they were um, not following the proper procedures or guidelines, and then you'd be in mid contract and you couldn't use that program anymore. That was years ago. But point being is these companies are very professional. They they know what they're doing, and they're they're out to help people who just need that support. And our company has chosen to participate in being the the originating company to further help the support to get it out to the end user, which is the buyers of today's. Uh, marketplace being a nonprofit, right we don't have to worry about the you know the fat cat ceo taking all, all the money into his pocket uh and not contributing back to the the purpose of, of their mission right right exactly um, so and th this may be a question that you don't have the specific stat to so you know shooting from the hip or just kind of your best general guess is, is mm -hmm. fine for what it is right didn't prepare you for this question that's um, you know, how many people, maybe percentage wise, are taking advantage or utilizing the down payment assistance program in any form, right? I mean, you know, are we looking at, you know, it, it, it's not 100% clearly, but, but, you know, it strikes me that it's probably a pretty good size percentage. Well, if I look at our own company's numbers, and that's a good number for me to at least know that's a reality and a fact, it's about 5%. Okay. So it, it may not be as high as you think, but 5% is actually a pretty big number of a certain very large number. <laughs> and it used to be 1%. So it's really spread its wings over the years to be able to reach. The, the challenge is it's just not reaching all the people that need to know and learn and understand what's available to them because like we, we said before, and kind of tongue in cheek, but it's true, people still think they need 20% for down payment. And then when we share, you could do 3% or 5%, that's baffling and, and really exciting. And then we say, well, if you meet certain other criteria, you could even do no down payment with the advent of these assistance programs. And um, then when that education is put out there, 
then, then of course the decisions are made. So it, it's just a tool in our toolbox that we talk about every time somebody says, I have about this much money to work with. And I would say that number right now in today's market is about $10,000. So someone says, I've got $10,000 to buy a house <coughs> that we will look at saying, okay, here's what you can do with your $10,000. And as a traditional loan, and here's what we can do to help free up some of that $10,000 to use to be more aggressive in your offer and use the down payment program to support the down payment. Yeah. So, so that's, that's a number. So if someone says I have $3,000, we have to go down payment assistance. And that's just the option. And it's a great option because who would have ever thought you could buy a house with $3,000? Yeah, it, it's so, been a while since the, yes. you know that that constituted the down payment in our Denver metro area. Right, right. So. And and the other side of the equation is the market is such that sellers, I've been seeing because I'm speaking with my own clientele base right now, uh, seeing uh, open to accepting offers that have down payment assistance programs tied to them, because there is unfortunately this mis misnomer that that that. Um, offer may not be as strong as somebody putting 25 or 30 percent down and not using a down payment assistance program that's actually not true there are so many details to everybody's ability to qualify you could have someone who just had a foreclosure six months ago but has two hundred thousand dollars to work with to buy a house they're not a qualified buyer but someone who has three thousand dollars and uses a down payment program is so we could take it to one stream one extreme to the other but in reality it's just something that needs education. And that's that's where we get on the phone and talk to the other realtor and let them know clients well qualified. We've just chosen to use this really good program that meets their financial requirements. Yeah. And that's how we that's how we phrase it because it's true. Yeah. So. And, and in my experience in, in the conversation that I have with, uh, you know, with a lot of my seller clients is you're going to get your check from the title company at closing. Do you really care how the buyer came up with theirs? Right, they had no cash involved. That doesn't mean that they're not committed to it, right? Right. If I was going to like sell a business to somebody who had no financial investment into it, maybe I'm a little bit more concerned about how that's going to go, right? Right. Because right. they've got no skin in the game. If I'm launching this new business, right? But uh, for a house sale, man, if the buyer's committed. They're ready to go. I don't care how they come up with their money. As long as it was legal, <laughs> they're That's not true. knocking over a bank to, to get well, their down payment, right? These down payment assistance programs are fully legitimate <laughs> yeah. and we utilize them quite often. And they're, they're just a great resource to have. And, you know, if people have more interest, they, they could one, they could go and check out the websites for each of these programs. They have a lot of good information for uh, consumers to get an idea of how it works, but the nuts and bolts of it are extremely detailed. And I don't know if they purposely make it that way, where that very only specific lending firms who want to take the time to learn it and get trained on it, because you have to be uh, to do it. Those are the people you'll want to talk to to make sure you're getting the right information and making good decisions so that you do enter into a contract, you can close because you don't want the oops, I did not know that guideline or that rule. I didn't know that we were now going to have a problem with that. Well, that's one of the conversations that I'll have with lenders. Uh, and again, I, I do this when I'm representing both the buyers and the sellers. So when I'm talking to a buyer who who brings their own lender, if, if that's a thing, right? If they, if they come to me, which happens more often, and I introduce them to Mitch, I know Mitch knows his stuff. I know we're going to get it done. But on the seller side of it, when I get a listing and I've got an offer that comes through, I'm calling and having a conversation with the lender. And, and if it's a down payment assistance program, one, I'm not not concerned about it. I just want to know how many of these are you doing? How frequently are you doing them? How up to speed are you to, to make sure that, okay, have they checked all the boxes they need to check? And as long as they're checking the boxes, great. I, I know that we probably have a very serious buyer who's who's ready to go. Right. And I, and I think uh, an avid question behind that would be, do you have a backup just in case? Yeah. Yeah, so. I've got a backup. His name's Mitch Friedman. If, right, right. <laughs> you know, lender well, one can't it. do it. <laughs> Mitch right. is usually well. one that, that we uh, chime back to. So, um, you know, to to share a, a little personal story, right? And now, when I when I bought my first home, um, I didn't go through a down payment assistance program. Uh, it was kind of fortunate enough for me that my great grandmother had left me money for college, and I had some extra when I didn't complete college. 
<laughs> that, that went towards the, the small down payment that I needed to buy a house. But I was, you know, a college age kid and I had a couple of roommates. I think at the time I had two or three roommates and we were all paying rent. And it, it occurred to me, well, gosh, if I bought a house, I could keep roommates, roommates that I liked, and they could pay me the same amount that they're paying the, the property owner. And I would actually be able to live cheap or live for free. And this was something that I was like, wow, that, that just makes sense. It's something that I'm going to do. Now, at the time and the location, the house I bought, maybe I needed $5,000 down to be able to do it, right? It wasn't, it wasn't a, the prices we're looking at today when I bought my first home. But so I'm thinking of, right, the, that individual that lives with roommates, right? You've got good credit. You've got a steady job but you don't have the long history. You haven't been saving up, but you don't mind living with roommates, right? I was single at the time. I didn't have to worry about, you know, my, my wife, right? Who now today, if I told her, Hey, we're renting out the basement. Uh, I think she would say, yeah, we're renting it to you. Exactly. You're going to have to pay. We're not, we're not giving it to anybody else. Uh, thankfully she chooses to live with me still, but you know, to, to wrap this up, I, I can get a down payment assistance and buy a, three, four hundred thousand dollar home. And I have the ability then to move into that place, still keep roommates instead of the roommates paying somebody else. They're now paying you right to, to purchase the home, own the home, maintain the home, do all those things. And you're collecting a rent check every month. You could live for free or cheaper than you were living before. Um, right. That, that to me just makes a lot of sense when you're in that scenario. Correct. And that's a great example of, of getting into real estate kind of no matter what, <laughs> as long as it's affordable. Yeah. And maybe you get it, you don't get the very, very best loan first go around because you needed to use down payment assistance because they do, they do charge a little bit higher interest rate. That's part of the offset of the risk of no down payment. Um, but it gets you in the door and it gets this appreciation that we mentioned earlier and it builds your net worth and it builds a portfolio of real estate if that's a, a desire or a passion for somebody. Um, and then you can rent out a room or two and have have your mortgage be very, very low cost, uh, yeah. less a very small down payment. Now you must occupy the home in any of these down payment programs. Uh, you can't convert it to a full rental, but there's nothing saying you can't have people living in the home with you. Yeah, and, and that, that was my scenario, right? I had a three bedroom house and I, had roommates in there. They paid $400 a month. Killer deal. I thought even at the time, right? But again, my mortgage wasn't super crazy. And, you know, I was able to reduce my overall expenses. I wasn't even thinking long-term appreciation for the home. Uh, as, as I bought my house, home values were still depreciating. So, so that wasn't the consideration, but it was, you know, I'm paying more a month to rent something else that, you know, wasn't overly nice, right? It was a college house in a college town, um, you know, and I was able to buy something nicer and then turn around and actually live cheaper. It, it just worked out financially. Now you could do something along the same lines. Numbers got to make sense. I was in a position I could still afford the whole mortgage. It wasn't as comfortable <laughs> as having the roommates live there. Right. Good. Well, again, great, a great opportunity to consider uh, whether you use a down payment assistance program or a traditional loan, another way to to own real estate and make it affordable for sure. Yeah. yeah. So um, anything else on the down payment assistance programs um, you know, that, that you want to convey here? Yeah. Um, so each of those programs do require the buyer, home buyer to take a online class that I think is extremely valuable. Uh, every client that I've worked with that has had to go through it I always ask the same question. So how was it? Because it's six hours long Ooh. and you don't have to sit there for all six hours. You can do it an hour a night. You know, whenever you have time, you just have to get it done. Uh, but I always ask that question. They go, you know, it was long, but I really walked away with two or three items that are really very beneficial in understanding what it means to own a home that I did not know about at all. And so, um, so at least it's not a, a time not well spent you people do walk away with some value from it and two it is a requirement uh, that each program any any of the down payment assistance programs require the, the home buyer to, to complete 
Um, and I think it makes sense. It just makes someone smarter and more educated on the home buying process and the financial responsibilities. And if that happens, we'll see hopefully more fewer foreclosures or defaults. And when someone has no money into the transaction, sometimes psychologically the thought is, well, if I've, I'm falling in hard times, I might be able to walk away, but I'm not going to lose a lot of money of my own cash. Well, the reality of it is you may lose your, your equity position that got built up over time. So instead of losing the home, you put it up for sale at that point. Um, but, but that class is just very informative and, and useful and, and has to be taken. Um, it, it does last for one year, the certificate. So if someone were to take a class today, it's valid for the next 12 months, as long as they buy and close on a new home within those, that 12 months. Cool. So, so, so if, if you're watching this video, you took this class nine months ago, uh, call me right now. I'll get you connected to Mitch. We'll get you into home. We'll get this closed exactly. before that expires and you got to sit through another six hours. At least maybe, you know, if you learn two or three things the first time, maybe there's there's one or two that you had to it that, you know, maybe you missed uh, the first go around. So, um, yeah, it's it, it's a great opportunity. A, a lot of the, the misconceptions are I have to have never bought a home in the past. And that's just not real. Right. You can take advantage of this um, or these programs as long as you meet the criteria and be able to go forward um, and get into homeownership. Right. The, the dream of home ownership is, is very powerful. And while everybody should have the opportunity to be a homeowner, not everybody's going to take that um, that opportunity. And, and that's unfortunate. I think that, uh, you know, home ownership is a great way to establish yourself in the community, to build value, to build equity. Um, sure. But Mitch, you, you and I agree. Of course, we're in the real estate industry. Clearly, we're biased, um, you know, but that, that doesn't mean we're wrong. Exactly. Yeah, we're, we're very rarely wrong, especially when we're at home. You know that. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> However, you know, people can just talk to their friends who own real estate and their folks and their family members who do own real estate and kind of get, get their take on it. And everyone's got a great story about their first home, right? There's always the, I never thought I could afford those payments. And, and it's amazing how three months later you forget you even have them and you're back, you're, you're living your, your traditional, typical lifestyle still. Um, yeah. And, and it's just interesting how we just, we adjust and we adapt and, and it's well worth that thought process to take the next step to buy your first home if you, if you haven't yeah. um, before. And utilize one of these down payment assistance programs if that's the, the proper uh, loan program to choose from. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, as we wrap this up and, and you mentioned it, so going to put you on the spot there. Tell us about your first house. Uh, you know, where, where was it? What, um, you know? What were the specifics? Give all the yeah, it was, it was, details. It, it was a very unique transaction, so it's, it's fun to share. Um, just not quite married yet, but engaged. Uh, lived in West Los Angeles in California. And a home was listed in the newspaper, the classified ads. And it said- What was looking, the newspaper? <laughs> it was the Los Angeles Times. <laughs> no, not, not specific, but you know, what, is, what a is a newspaper? What is a newspaper? Right? Got it, anymore. okay. <laughs> Never heard of it. And, and the ad said, uh, no, no down payment. Ironically, yeah. So I called the I called the person. Turns out he was selling a home for his mom, who was very, old, who was older, and she needed to be put in, uh, moved into an assisted living facility. And he said, "We're just trying to get out from underneath the loan. It's a assumable loan, so that meant I could take over the existing loan under the current terms as long as I qualified. And with that, they would sell it to me for what the loan balance was." Okay. So this is in a beautiful area. I don't know if you remember a guy named OJ Simpson. Heard of him. Uh, so he heard lived, of him. Actually knew of OJ before the reasons you shouldn't know the name OJ Simpson. Exactly. From, yes. And so he lived three blocks away from this condo community. And we uh, saw the home. It had yellow walls because the grandma and the mom was a smoker. Okay. And so so didn't, was, didn't paint them yellow intentionally. Did, just did over paint, time no, actually, faded that yellow. They actually painted little parts in the wall like with squares that were white and that's where the the paintings were hanging <laughs> that never got <laughs> they didn't get stains <laughs> so with that said wonderful community great little condo complex uh i i put in what i needed to to qualify literally i walked in with some closing costs because you had to pay those and we bought that home with no money down on an adjustable rate mortgage the interest right. rate was 13 and a half percent People and are I was thrilled. Now at three and a half, I was, I was thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> uh, eventually, I refinanced 
we sold, we bought it for $123,000 and we sold it for, I believe something like $189,000 two years later. And then bought a uh, three bedroom townhome in Santa Monica and then, you know, goes from there. But uh, it, it was just one of those, God, how did that happen? We never thought we could do it. Oh, we went from a rent payment of $300 to a mortgage payment of twelve hundred dollars. Talk about jump. talk about a big jump. That was a big jump, and we did just fine. But we were scared out of our minds to do it, but we did. Yeah. So it was great. It's a good story, and and I know you, you shared yours with us. So thank you. Yeah. So you know, mine jumped up from three eighty a month uh, to about nine fifty a month. Um, thankfully, value taxes went down a little bit, so it dropped a, a small amount. Uh, then years later, refinanced, was able to drop it significantly um, and actually worked myself to a position to be completely out of debt, uh, you know, in a short amount of time. So great, great things can happen sure. when leveraging real estate. Down payment assistance program can get you into real estate so that you can take advantage and, and do those. Like we talked about earlier, gives you options. If you're renting, your only option is to continue renting, um, pay the landlord's mortgage, move to a different rental. Um, you know, it doesn't give you very many options. You're kind of stuck. Correct. Yep. So it's a great opportunity to consider if you're thinking about buying a home for sure. So watching this right overarching story. Um, if you wanted to get into home ownership, don't let down payment stop you. Don't let poor credit stop you. Don't let anything stop you from getting into home ownership. If that's your dream, right? Um, we'll find solutions. We'll make introductions. We'll do what we need to do. And sometimes, the solution, the, the program may already exist. You don't have to wait. You could just pull the trigger. All you got to do is call and ask. So, uh, you know, Mitch, I'm going to I'm going to put your email again here down in the bottom ticker. Uh, so if you're watching, you've got specific questions, want to get connected to Mitch. Uh, there's his contact information. Um, everybody watching, you know how to get a hold of me. So, um, Mitch, any final parting words? Um, just continue to think big and i think real estate is part of thinking big when you've never done it before and it, it's actually not as intimidating as it looks when you get involved and so just get involved get educated learn what's available to you and then from there you did make a decision that you know what i thought it was much much more to it and uh, then you and next thing you know you could be opening the door to your own house and go i cannot believe i bought this house for such few dollars that i can afford in an area that that works for me so I guess dream big would be my parting two words. Yeah, right. If, if me at 23 and those of you that know me, like I am not the sharpest tool in the in the toolbox, right? But at 23, it was way worse. Um, if I could figure it out and figure out how to do it, right? anybody really can do it. So it's just yeah. about like taking that step. And the first step may be just calling me or Mitch. Right. And it's funny you say 23. We had a closing two days ago with a gentleman who just turned 23 and he used the Metro down payment assistance program yeah. and he could not believe he was able to buy a house. He came into closing with about $3,000 wow. and he could not believe he could buy a home at this age with such a little bit amount of money that was affordable. Yeah. So it works. It, it could absolutely happen. It happened for that 23 year old, right? Mitch bought with uh, you know, very little down under uh, no, no down required option. Um, you know, those, me, those don't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, for, me, for me, I guess it wasn't very different, right? It was no down payment. It wasn't my money. My great grandmother gifted me those funds long, long ago. So, um, you know, from, from up in heaven where she's watching me today, thank you so much for that. Mm, exactly. uh, it may have set me on a path that got me into real estate overall. So, uh, Mitch as always, thank you so much, uh, for spending time and investing here with us and sharing information on you know, the down payment programs. Uh, as you're watching, right, make sure that you reach out. Let me know what you want to hear uh, from Mitch for next month. And uh, thanks y'all for tuning in. Great. Thanks for having me, Matt. Right. Good to see you again. We'll see you, Mitch. Look forward to it. Bye-bye. All right.